Hey everyone, this is uh, Will Seaborn, I'm a user researcher here on the Fusion 360 team, and I've got um, our product managers here and a couple of user um, experience designers. So with me, I've got Kaching Song, Garen Gardner, and Colin Smith, and Charles Hoyt and Paul Dale. And so we're here today to talk about the S3 update. So that went live about a week ago. Most of you guys are probably on that right now, and we got a big list of stuff that we fixed or added, posted up in the forums, but we just wanted to take the, the time to give that a little more context and actually show you what's changed. So um, I'm gonna pass it over to Garen to get things started. But while we're going over this, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and just use the little question box um, on the GoToMeeting panel, and sorry, GoToWebinar, and we'll see if we can get those answered um, either while we're presenting or toward the end. So, Garen. Great, thanks Will. Uh, and first off, thank you all for participating. We're uh, excited to be able to share some of the new things that we've been working on. And uh, we'll have some, some time at the very end for some questions and answers, I think. But with that, we wanted to, to do kind of a high level overview of, of what we did for our S3 update. Um, some of you may have noticed that we, we actually just pushed a, a minor, minor update, S3.1. And you may have noticed an automatic update um, when you launched Fusion. Uh, it'll pop up a little bullet that, that will say there's a new update. You click on it and it'll update it uh, in the back. That's something that we're, we're now turning on and we'll be able to do in the future so we can push updates without you having to go uninstall and reinstall and, and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, that, that will get easier over time. Um, but first off, quality. You know, we have got a lot of feedback from you guys this last couple of months. We've been able to find a, a lot of defects, and we've been able to fix a lot of those defects. So um, from, from S2 to S3, we've been able to fix 659 defects, so that's pretty impressive um, in, in both finding and getting those fixed. And then also, as you guys are crashing and filling out those crash error reports, that helps us a lot to, to find problematic areas we've been able to find and, and fix 115 of those. So, you know, first off, thank you so much for you guys participating and, and sending that information in for us. And with that, you know, we're going to go through a handful of the different environments, the sculpt environment, material updates, modeling, assemblies, a handful of, of those and give some high level overview, some videos and, and demos. So the first one we're going to get into is sculpt and material enhancements. And I'm going to turn some time over to Paul Deo to, to do some live demoing and give you guys an update on, on some of the new sculpting enhancements. So, Paul? Thank you. So, um, one of the first things I wanted to talk about was uh, some updates to the repair body tool. So, the re repair body command is used to find problems with the T-spline. And we've, we've reorganized it, uh, improved it, and added... Uh, the ability to see free edges so those yellow lines you see across here indicate that there are either a bound there's either a boundary or there's a gap in between the faces in either case it causes a problem with uh, using this the uh, t-spline body so you can do an automatic repair you see here at the top uh, you'll also see that there are error labels that happen up here and error stars, T points, free edges. By the way, there's a really good demo that's out on the hub right now under the learning se se uh, section that you could probably take advantage of. Um, but here I just wanted to show the new stuff, which was these free edges. Uh, if I turn it off, you can see where those yellow highlights are. If I do an auto repair, it automatically joins any of those edges together. Um, I could undo that. Another way to fix that same sort of a, a condition is with a tool called Merge Edge, and that's new in here as well. Uh, with the Merge Edge tool, you can take a uh, one set of edges and merge them to a second set, like this, creating a, a valid T-spline body. Uh, an, another useful case for that is if you're, you might use the bridge tool, but if you are trying to join uh, two bodies together and you don't um, necessarily have the same number of edges, so that's another reason that you might want to use the merge edge tool. You can set one set and then the second set and then merge those together 
Now, one thing you want to be careful of when you use this is just the quality of your um, T-spline body. Whenever you create T-junctions, it can make uh, for less than the best quality uh, uh, T-spline. So Merge Edge is a good tool to use, uh, but keep uh, in mind that T-junctions are not your friend all the time. So uh, keep, keep an eye out for those. I'm just going to undo that and raise another um, change that we've made. This is um, uh, this has to do with how we uh, define the boundaries of where a, uh, we use cancel or uh, escape and undo. So I've got the edit form tool up here, and I'm going to pick uh, pick all these faces. And the change that we've made to this is that now when you make a modification, and now I've gone once, twice three times. Now I'm going to select and do a rotate and actually do notice that as I selected that um, arrow it repositioned it. The reason is that if I go back into here I can rotate it and actually make a modification to this value here so I can take it 45 degrees or put it back to zero and now each one of those steps has actually become an, an undo every time I hit the one of the manipulators. So my undo string here is now, in the past, what would have happened is all of this would have been collected into one uh, set of operations and you would have had to undo them all. Now they can actually be done undone and redone separately. And so we, we'd like you to check that out, see how that feels in terms of the interaction with the command. Uh, again, what happens is that whenever you select one of the manipulators, it sets the boundary for your undo. And you've added the ability to um, put in specific values inside the what we call the RVEC there. We've made changes to the create face command. So bring that back up. So that same model that we were looking at. Um, now I'm going to go use the create face command. You're possibly familiar with the fact that you can create faces, uh, four-sided faces, just by setting vertices or you can put them on a plane as well. But in addition now you can do multi-sided or n-gons. What I'm going to do is just set each one of these vertices as the location and then go back to the origin, the, the first one that I picked, and now I've made a five-sided face, and that's allowed me to fill in a five-sided uh, polygon in that corner. It's creating star points then in these uh, two corners, which are sometimes acceptable, but now you can basically fill in corners where before you could only do that with a four-sided uh, face.